Hello, my name is John Thuma, and today we're going to talk about R, and I have uh, the special guest here from uh, Teradata, Roger Freed, who's going to take us through a basic introduction to R and how it works with our big data solutions. Hey, Roger, how are you doing today? Doing very well. Thank you, John. Well, good. Thanks for your time today, and uh, why don't you give me a little introduction of who you are and uh, tell us what you're going to take us through today. Okay. Well, I am uh, originally a finance guy who was an Excel guru but until I found R and found that I loved R for its expanded capabilities. And uh, then later on I discovered the power of integrating R with databases, uh, particularly Aster, um, Teradata Aster, which is a database that is designed to be a discovery platform and designed for big data analytics. Excellent. Well, look forward to it. Um, this is an exciting opportunity for Teradata and our customer base, and uh, so why don't we just go ahead and get started? Sure. Well, I'm envisioning this as perhaps a, a series of uh, different videos discussing how to integrate R with Aster. And so, first off, I want to really start off with why run Aster in database. There's going to be a lot of configurations a lot of different ways that you can work with R and after. I'm going to lead up to just one of those configurations. Excellent. So the first issue is what is R? Why use R? Um, this is something that originally evolved uh, in academia from uh, with a focus on statistics. It started in 1993 as an alternative to SAS and SPSS. Currently it has millions of users worldwide and uh, those are from a variety of disciplines. Most of them are not statisticians. There's finance people, data scientists, um, specialists in you know, analytics in a variety of different uh, micro niches. And all of them have found that um, R is a great environment because it has integrated sets of packages for data manipulation, calculations, and graphical display. And it has a full set of 7,000 and growing open source packages that have been created by the experts in every particular field for anything from uh, financial market analysis to uh, linear modeling, bioinformatics, spatial statistics, whatever it may be. So that kind of variety, that kind of power, that kind of flexibility is a great reason to use R, and it's a great reason to – yes? It's really, that's really interesting. I mean, it's also – and I, I, maybe I'm jumping ahead here a little bit, and, you know, if I am, just uh, tell me, hey, you're jumping ahead here a little bit. But it's also uh, a lot of kids are coming out of school these days with uh, R programming. Can you explain a little bit of that to me? Sure. In the past, sort of the general business analytics tool was Excel. Everyone knew Excel, but we've run into the limitations of Excel. We know what those limitations are. So the next stage is really moving to R, which is provide the more structured environment. And, uh, of course, the, the open source packages that I was talking about. And so it, I'm... I previously was uh, part of a master's program in predictive analytics, and I found that R was one of the standard languages that most courses would cover there. And there's a new breed of people uh, coming out from MBA programs, which are including analytics, uh, predictive analytics programs, IT programs, and a large portion of them are building up R and to less degree uh, Python skills to support analytics. Excellent. Thank you very much. Uh, let's keep going. Show me more. Okay. Well, I love R. It's great. It expanded my horizons once I realized that Excel couldn't do what I needed. But unfortunately, R has its own limitations. It was designed long before large data sets became common. I mean, it's, it's a desktop application. And because of this sort of older uh, design, this older idea of what an application should do or can do, it doesn't leverage even the laptop or the computer that you're using. It doesn't fully leverage um, the skills of uh, or it doesn't, leverage the capabilities of what you've got. So, for example, modern computers have multiple CPUs or processors, and R doesn't know how to effectively use them. It's called, the term is called a 
single threaded. And within that, it doesn't efficiently distribute the workload to the different CPUs to try to optimize efficiency. Let me see if I understand this. Let me see if I understand this, Roger, forgive me. Um, so what you mean is, is that R is an, it's an excellent application for doing, you know, just, just predictive analytics, machine learning, statistics, data preparation on a small scale set of data, on a small set of data. When, you come, exactly. when it comes to larger scales of data, it, it may be pretty limited. Is that what you're saying? Yes, it's very good with very, very good with small sets, incredible flexibility, but it just wasn't designed for large data sets. It wasn't designed to be an enterprise solution to pull data from multiple places, to efficiently store that data, to not make multiple copies of the data in memory. Um, so what you have to do is you can still use R, but you have to figure out how to integrate it into a framework where you can take advantage of R itself, but then use that framework to support R. So, so as I was mentioning, R, normal R programming, for example, is, has an incredible amount of flexibility to it. It's not as flexible as Excel. Um, Excel could be described as chaotic. Um, moving to R uh, brings a sort of a, a one degree or one uh, magnitude of, of uh, more structure to things. But normal R programming captures multiple copies of the data set. So even if you're trying to work with a data set and you're limited to RAM and you're limited to one CPU and you're making multiple copies of it just because that's normal R programming the way that R works, um, you're, you've got quite a limitation right there. And so that limitation is very similar to Excel where back in the day, Excel was limited to 56,000 rows. Now, I remember. there's no true limitation when it comes to Excel telling you, no, you can't do it. But things do tend to break down pretty quickly, especially when you have multiple spreadsheets, multiple things open, uh, links between different spreadsheets. The things that you're trying to do are just limited by your memory, and that's exactly what's happening in R. R simply can't scale in its current structure. And these bottlenecks um, basically result in wasted time or worse, poor results. And so uh, you know, you're gonna... I'm a programmer. You know, I, I've been yeah. programming in, in uh, you know, .NET, pre-.NET, Java, mm -hmm. and everything else. How, how hard is it to learn R? I mean, is it, is it a pretty simple language? Is it, is it a programming language? Is it, I mean, what, what kind of skill sets do you have to have to really take advantage of this? Well, I came into it as a finance user thinking, visualizing Excel. Um, other people come at, it, come at it from uh, stronger programming backgrounds, and they bring their strengths into it. The way programmers typically think of R is that it's very, very focused and very strong on object management. It's very, very focused on being the uh, Swiss Army knife of data manipulation and calculation. It's not necessarily a, a full-scale scripting language. And that's one of the differences between R and, for example, going to the next level with Python, where Python is thought of as more of a, uh, a normal scripting language, but it doesn't happen to be as strong in statistics and uh, uh, routine data manipulation. And so those people who want to focus on the, the data manipulation and focus on the analysis still gravitate towards R for its simplicity and power. Excellent. So let's keep going. Sure. So as I was mentioning, because you can't scale, one, you, your people are wasting time. You as an analyst, you're wasting time trying to uh, gather repeated sampling from your data set. In, a, in an attempt to, uh, you know, basically eat the elephant one bite at a time, or you just give up, throw up your hands and say, okay, I'm going to grab just a portion of my data and run my analysis on that, and your results could be wrong. Um, so you're losing time. You're, you have wasted effort that's not focused on the actual analytics, and your answers can be wrong because R simply can't scale. 
Um, yeah, exactly. So I'm curious how Aster can help solve these problems because I know what we talk about is use all the data, use all the data across many channels um, and uh, for, for longer periods of time at the lowest level grain. So I'm really curious how, how this is going to be different for us in, in Aster. Okay. Well, Teradata Aster is an enterprise platform and it's designed to integrate a large variety of different applications and analytic styles and data storage uh, uh, into, it, in, into something called the SNAP architecture. And so because it's designed from the ground up to be uh, extensible or um, a, you know, a SNAP to integrate, um, there's a variety of different ways that you can integrate R with it. And um, we're going to discuss a little bit about some of those different possibilities before focusing on one style, which is in database analytics. But what we really want to do is we want to be able to leverage the R packages. We want to especially leverage the R skills because many companies have people that are experienced in R and are very comfortable there, but are less comfortable with databases, less comfortable with uh, other enterprise systems. And so we want to try to make sure that they can use R as an interface to access the full power of Aster. What we want to be able to do is we want to take advantage of, one, a powerful Aster server, and not be dependent on a very limited desktop or laptop. Mm -hmm. we, want to be, we want to be able to make a full use of distributed parallel processing managed by Teradata Aster. We don't want to uh, be engineers and try to figure out exactly what's happening under the covers. What we want is for Aster to manage the map produce, the parallelization, all of the, let's say, interesting stuff. And we want to focus on our function. We want to focus on what we're trying to achieve and not worry about any of the uh, stuff ha happening uh, behind the scenes. So Aster will do that for us. If I can we reiterate, also want to... So if I can sure. reiterate, what we're doing is, is we're taking away the limitations and the, the reasons why not to use R as far as the scalability of data and the, the pure data sizing and crunching and uh, you know, just just the horsepower of the machine, and we've addressed, we've kind of started to address those issues with the the Teradata Aster platform. Is that is that correct? That is exactly it. That R is great, but it, as I mentioned, it's got certain design issues that are, were there from the beginning and have been made very apparent in the modern age of big data. And so we can, by integrating R with Aster, we can take R into the modern age and have a very powerful combined skill set or uh, resource set. And uh, another part of that is the what's called in-database processing, where we can free ourselves from the limitations of the operating, the very limited operating memory or RAM that we typically operate on on a desktop. And we we're can basically, We're basically pushing down the processing off of the desktop and onto the Aster appliance, is that correct? Exactly. Okay. So we're freeing ourselves from those limitations. What we also do with this integration, this um, integration, is that we can take advantage of Aster itself. It has a full set of functions that have been optimized for processing and visualizing very large sets of data. It is an enterprise solution that integrates with data warehouses alternative forms of data storage such as Hadoop or uh, CRM systems, ERP systems, etc. So it can serve as that sort of data hub for us and we as an R person don't have to worry about uh, those external systems. We can have Teradata, Aster do the work for us. Excellent. So the idea is, is that we would have the data that R uses on the Aster appliance um, and leverage that appliance and all the full capabilities of that scalability of that system with all the power and flexibility of R and push that down into the Aster infrastructure where it can run at full scale at, at, a, at a faster speed. So the performance is also improved. Is that correct too? That is exactly it. R becomes an enterprise tool with enterprise level performance. Excellent. Show me more. Sure. As I mentioned before, there's a lot of different ways that you can integrate R with Aster. 
Um, again, Teradata Aster is designed to integrate a variety of different uh, analytic functions, uh, different uh, data sources, data storage systems, and so Teradata Aster can take care of all that for us, but we can use, for example, one configuration would be to, this would be the trivial, um, uh, simple uh, integration is um, using baby steps to use our commands to pull data from the Teradata Aster ba uh, Teradata database. And that actually gives us a lot of power. Um, there's a lot of our users that are tr they're trying to figure out how is it that we integrate R with databases in general, and this can serve that purpose. It's a trivial configuration, but it delivers a lot of value for some users. Excellent. Second, we could use R as an interface to manage Teradata Aster. So it's a it's a comfortable interface for many people. They already have their skill sets, and uh, they don't have to understand the, the understand the ins and outs of um, Teradata Aster. They just want to run their functions, the Teradata Aster functions, and import the results. And that's an so if easy I understand that, If I understand that properly, if you're already classically trained in R, or if you already have R experience on the desktop or in another environment. Transitioning to Aster and transitioning to Aster with R is not going to be that cumbersome or difficult. Exactly. It provides a comfortable interface. It's an interface that can be integrated with your existing R scripts, and so you just integrate it as part of your larger R process. Excellent. Okay. There's also just like there's 7,000 other packages out there, we have one special package, um, which is Aster R package, so that R can execute Aster functions, and it just and they look exactly like it's just one more R package, but it has the full power of Aster to run Aster's uh, uh, 120 and growing uh, special big data analytic functions. So the fourth way, and this is the way that I want to cover in the next video in detail, but I'll describe it uh, a little bit more in this video, but you can take an R script and you can move it into the database and you can execute it within the database. And the full, this is really getting the full power of R after integration where what you're doing you don't have to worry about the size of your inputs. They can be millions of rows. You don't have to worry about your outputs. They can be millions of rows. But you're running your R script and executing it with that full power of Teradata Aster. Fantastic. Please continue. Okay. So we want to remember we want to remove the limitation of limitations of R by using Aster in database R processing. We want to maximize the potential for R scripts. We want to use the Aster hardware. We want to fully utilize the processors. We want to escape the limits of RAM or the operating memory. We want to eliminate the unnecessary data movement. We wanted to make sure that our source data and our target data reside in solid database tables. We want to make sure that the data that results is in an open format that can be read by other tools, including Excel, Tableau, visualization tools, other analysis tools. And in general, we want to just avoid that unnecessary duplication, especially when we're dealing with millions and millions of rows. And we also want to be able to easily take advantage of Aster's multiple analytic engines. So mm -hmm. Aster itself has powerful C, uh, map, um, MPP, which is massively parallel processing uh, function, analytic functions, including its version of SQL and SQL MapReduce, pattern matching, network node graphing engines, text analytics, and more. Excellent. So, I mean, it really sounds like uh, it solves a lot of the problems that you initially addressed in this conversation. It's really, you know, being able
able to take advantage of data at scale, um, the ability to, to, to not only scale but perform and uh, to take advantage of that experience of R without a huge steep learning curve of how to do this at, on, on an Astra platform while giving you not only everything R can do but the power of our SQL MapReduce and our SQL Graph functionality as well. Is that, is that a pretty good summary of what you're talking about here today? That's a good summary, and that's an impressive package that we've got when you put the two together. Fantastic. All right, Roger, this has been an excellent presentation. I, I'm so uh, pleased that we got this time today, and I look forward to uh, videos coming up in the future where we're going to go into a deeper dive here. Um, right. Do you have anything else you'd like to conclude today or finish up today's conversation? Uh, just a preview of what the next conversation will be. The next conversation will be just sort of the basic architecture for uh, visualizing R scripts running in database. And we'll start to dig into what the code looks like. And there's sort of boilerplate functions and um, useful library or pack or packages that uh, facilitate this. And we'll run our first R script in database. Awesome. I am. Uh... Deeply looking forward to that, and uh, you know this is an exciting time for Teradata and Aster, and I do appreciate your time today, Roger. This has been excellent. Thank you, sir. Thank you, John. It's been a pleasure for me as well.